Welcome to the Human Meme Podcast. I'm AI David Bowles, and along with our Crackbot AI team, we have crafted together some ideas for you today that concern the relationship between religion and the theater. Exploring the Symbiosis of Sacred and Stage, the Transformation of Religious and Theatrical Spaces. Today, we wander into a rich exploration of the intricate interplay between religion and theater, guided by the profound insights of figures like Paul Tillich and Antonine Artaud, and illuminated by examples from ancient passion plays to modern Broadway hits like The Book of Mormon and Jesus Christ Superstar. This journey stretches through Tillich's exploration of ultimate concern, touching the essence of our existential quests and Artaud's visionary theater of cruelty, challenging our perceptions and emotions. These perspectives, along with the transformative narratives of The Debuk and Inherit the Wind, create a vibrant imagination that showcases the deep, symbiotic relationship between the sacred rituals of faith and the performative expressions of theater. This intricate dance of the sacred and the performative speaks profoundly to the human spirit's need to make sense of the world. It's an exploration that transcends mere comparison, wandering into the essence of human expression and connection. Whether it's the structured narrative of a religious ceremony or the unfolding drama of a theatrical performance, both venues serve as stages for the human quest for understanding and emotional engagement. The metamorphosis of spaces, such as the transformation of theaters into churches or vice versa, is emblematic of this deep connection. These shifts are not just pragmatic repurposings, but are reflective of the symbiotic relationship between the divine and the dramatic. For instance, the Yale School of Drama's birth in a chapel, or the conversion of the Mark Hellinger Theater into a church, highlights a fusion of dramatic storytelling with spiritual narratives. In these transformations, we see the allure of architectural suitability and cultural significance that these spaces hold for both religious and theatrical communities. The conversions are more than utilitarian. They symbolize a mutual recognition and appreciation of the role these spaces play in communal storytelling and spiritual exploration. Paul Tillich's profound contributions to theology and philosophy shed a unique light on our exploration of the symbiosis between religion and theater. His concept of ultimate concern serves as a fascinating bridge between these two worlds offering a deeper understanding of the shared human quest for meaning and purpose. Tillich, in delving into existential questions, sought to unravel the mysteries of human existence and our relentless pursuit of meaning. This pursuit resonates deeply with both religious and theatrical experiences. In religion, the ultimate concern is often manifested in a person's deep and unwavering devotion to their faith a commitment that shapes and defines their entire being. In the realm of theater, this same intensity can be found in the passionate portrayal of characters, the immersive storytelling that grapples with life's grandest themes, existence, morality, and the human condition. The parallels here are striking. Consider how symbols and deep meanings play a pivotal role in both settings. In religious contexts, symbols are not mere representations, but are imbued with profound spiritual significance. Similarly, in theater, symbolism transcends the literal, allowing audiences to engage with complex ideas and emotions on a deeper, more introspective level. Tillich's exploration of these themes can be likened to a form of theological drama, where the stage is set not just for entertainment, but for a profound exploration of the human spirit. His approach mirrors the way theater imbues human experiences, employing dramatic tension and conflict to probe into life's existential dilemmas. 
Let's take examples from the theater world to illustrate this connection. The works of playwrights like Samuel Beckett or Arthur Miller resonate with Tillich's exploration of existential themes. Plays like Waiting for Godot and Death of a Salesman navigate the depths of human despair and longing, echoing Tillich's focus on ultimate concerns. These narratives, steeped in existential crisis, mirror the spiritual journeys and existential questions central to religious experiences. Through the lens of Paul Tillich's philosophy, we gain a richer understanding of how religion and theater intertwine in their quest to articulate and explore the human condition. Both realms, each in their unique way, serve as mediums for confronting and engaging with the profound questions of existence. In this exploration, we see not just the parallels in theme and approach, but a shared commitment to probing the depths of what it means to be human, offering pathways for self-discovery and existential understanding in our continuous human journey. In asking about the profound interplay of religion and theater, the insights of Antonin Artaud, particularly his conception of the theater of cruelty, become an essential piece of the puzzle. Artaud, a visionary in the world of theatrical arts, imagined a form of theater that transcended conventional boundaries, aiming to provoke and transform its audience. This radical approach shares an intriguing resonance with the transformative power of religious rituals. Artaud's theater of cruelty sought to impact its audience on a visceral, almost primal level, much like the intense emotional and spiritual awakening targeted in religious ceremonies. Artaud's theater was not about passive entertainment, but an active, jarring experience aimed at personal transformation. The parallel here with religious experiences is striking. Both seek to jolt individuals out of complacency, challenging them to confront deeper truths about themselves and the world. The ritualistic elements in Artaud's theater draw a direct line to religious practices. His emphasis on ceremony, rich symbols, and the expressive power of the human body mirrors the core components of religious rituals. Whether through a ceremonial dance or the enactment of a sacred rite, both Artaud's theater and religious ceremonies utilize physical expression as a gateway to something transcendent. Artaud's challenge to conventional perceptions and understanding aligns closely with the essence of many religious teachings. Both realms encourage a deep questioning and reevaluation of one's beliefs and understandings of the world. This process of questioning and confrontation is vital to the expansion of personal and collective consciousness, a theme central to both religious and theatrical experiences. Artaud's vision, therefore, offers a compelling framework for understanding the symbiotic relationship between religion and theater. His theater of cruelty, with its focus on impactful, ritualistic, and provocative experiences, echoes the transformative aims of religious practices. Both in his theatrical philosophy and in religious rituals, there is a pursuit of transcendence, a breaking down of barriers between the self and the greater truths of existence. This exploration of Artaud's ideas within the context of religion and theater deepens our understanding of the interconnectedness of these realms. It highlights how both seek to engage with and express the profound, often complex dimensions of human experience. Through this lens, we see the power of performance and ritual to not only reflect, but also to shape and elevate the human spirit in its endless quest for meaning and connection. In our exploration of the intertwined nature of religion and theater, passion plays emerge as a quintessential example, vividly illustrating this profound connection. These dramatic representations of the Passion of Christ encapsulate a unique fusion of religious narrative and theatrical form, 
offering a rich terrain for understanding the symbiosis between sacred rituals and performative arts. Passion plays, in their essence, are theatrical renditions of religious stories. They bring to life the harrowing events of Christ's final days, from his trial to crucifixion and resurrection. This dramatization, however, is not mere storytelling. It's a deeply spiritual affair, a form of worship that transcends conventional theater. The actors participating in these plays often describe their involvement as a spiritual calling, blurring the lines between acting and devotion. The emotional and spiritual impact of passion plays is profound. Much like the visceral effect sought in Artaud's Theater of Cruelty, these performances aim to engulf the audience in the narrative, not just as passive observers, but as participants in a shared spiritual journey. The portrayal of Christ's suffering and redemption is designed to resonate at a deeply personal level, evoking a sense of empathy, reflection, and, for many, spiritual awakening. Moreover, passion plays are inherently communal. They often involve entire communities, both in their production and viewership, fostering a sense of unity and collective experience. This aspect mirrors the communal nature of religious ceremonies, where congregations gather to share in faith and worship. In this shared experience, the audience is invited not just to witness, but to partake in a collective act of memory and devotion. In these plays, the use of ritual and symbolism is paramount. Each element, from the dialogue to the costumes, is imbued with theological significance, serving to deepen the audience's understanding of Christian teachings. This rich use of symbolism is a common thread in both religious practices and theatrical productions, where deeper meanings are conveyed through symbolic acts and imagery. Historically and culturally, passion plays hold a special place. They are not only religious observances, but also cultural events that draw diverse audiences. The Oberammergau Passion Play, for instance, has become a global phenomenon, attracting people from various backgrounds, reflecting its dual nature as a religious ritual and a cultural spectacle. Broadway plays and musicals that weave religious themes into their narratives, like The Book of Mormon, Jesus Christ Superstar, The Dibbuk, and Inherit the Wind offer a rich tableau for our exploration of the interplay between faith and performance, between the divine and the human quest for understanding. The Book of Mormon stands out as a remarkable example of this interplay. This musical, with its satirical lens, ventures into a bold critique of religious narratives and practices. Yet beneath its humor lies a profound exploration of the human need for belief and purpose. It's a complex dance between reverence and irreverence, where faith and doubt coexist, inviting us to reflect on the role of religion in shaping human identity and culture. Jesus Christ Superstar, with its rock opera format, brings a modern vibrancy to the ancient story of Jesus' last days. This blending of contemporary music with the biblical narrative creates a unique space where the sacred story is reimagined for a contemporary audience. The play humanizes the figure of Jesus, focusing on both his divinity and his humanity, and in doing so, bridges a millennia-old narrative with modern sensibilities. In the Dibbuk, we contemplate the mystical and spiritual depths of Jewish folklore. This play is a dramatic journey into themes of love, destiny, and spiritual possession, reflecting the rich mystical traditions of Judaism. It's a poignant reminder of how religious stories and beliefs can be powerfully expressed and explored through theatrical storytelling. Inherit the Wind tackles the often contentious relationship between science and religion. This play, rooted in historical events, dramatizes the struggle between established religious dogmas and emerging scientific understandings. 
It's a narrative that resonates with the ongoing dialogue between faith and reason, a reflection of the perennial human struggle to balance belief and knowledge. Expanding this exploration, we find plays like Godspell and Fiddler on the Roof. Godspell, with its celebration of the teachings of Jesus through song and parable, brings a sense of joy and community to the biblical stories. Fiddler on the Roof, meanwhile, portrays the challenges of maintaining religious and cultural traditions amidst change, highlighting the enduring strength and guidance that faith provides. These theatrical works, in their various ways, illustrate the dynamic relationship between faith and performance. They demonstrate how the stage can be a space for questioning, celebrating, and reimagining religious narratives. Here, the sacred narratives are not just told. They are opened up for dialogue, interpreted, and made relevant to contemporary audiences. Through this creative exploration, these plays and musicals invite us to engage with religious themes in a way that is both contemplative and transformative. Imagine walking into a grand theater. The stage is set, the audience hushed in anticipation. This scene, a tableau of narrative and performance, is mirrored in religious spaces. Both realms use ritual and performance to convey stories and emotions. Religious ceremonies with their liturgies and rituals parallel the structured narrative of a play. In both settings, there's a script to follow, a role to play, and an audience to engage. Yet, while theater and religion share this performative DNA, their intentions diverge. Theater often seeks to entertain, to hold a mirror to society, while religion reaches for the transcendent, guiding its followers towards spiritual realms. But even this distinction blurs at times. For some, a theatrical performance can be a religious experience in its ability to evoke profound emotions, to touch upon the ineffable. Conversely, the theatricality of religious rituals can transform a church or temple into a stage where cosmic dramas unfold. This fluid boundary is perhaps most visibly expressed in the physical transformation of spaces dedicated to religion and theater. Consider the metamorphosis of the Yale School of Drama, born in a chapel, or the Mark Hellinger Theater, now a church in the heart of New York City or the Stanley Theater in Jersey City, New Jersey, which has now become a church. These are not mere changes of function. They are stories of spaces transcending their original intentions, embracing the kinship between the divine and the dramatic. In these transformations, we see more than practicality at play. There's a recognition, perhaps unspoken, of the compatibility between these spaces. Theaters, with their grand architecture and capacity to hold large audiences, lend themselves well to religious gatherings. Conversely, churches, steeped in history and symbolism, provide a dramatic backdrop for theatrical performances. The Pantheon in Rome, a temple turned into a church, stands as a testament to this fluidity between the sacred and the civic. These stories are not just about buildings. They are about the human quest for meaning, whether expressed through religious faith or dramatic art. In this meaningful history where the sacred and the performative interweave, we find a deeper truth about the human condition. It's a truth that speaks to our collective longing for connection, for a sense of belonging to something larger than ourselves. Whether in the hushed reverence of a church or the rapt attention of a theater audience, there's a shared desire to be part of a communal experience, to be transported beyond the confines of our individual lives. This longing for transcendence, for a moment of connection with the ineffable, is perhaps what draws us to repurpose these spaces. When a theater becomes a church, or a church becomes a theater, 
It's as if the building itself is responding to our innate need for storytelling and spiritual exploration. These structures, be they ancient or modern, stand as guardians of human expression, adaptable to the changing needs and desires of the communities they serve. As we examine the history of these transformations, we uncover a mosaic of human aspiration and creativity. The stories of these buildings are not just about bricks and mortar. They are about the dreams and visions of the people who have inhabited them. In every conversion of a theater into a church or vice versa, there's an underlying narrative of hope, renewal, and the relentless pursuit of meaning. This pursuit is a journey that transcends time and culture. From the ancient Greek amphitheaters, which were spaces of both civic and theatrical importance, to the medieval cathedrals that hosted religious dramas, the interplay of the sacred and the performative has been a constant in human history. This enduring connection reminds us that our search for meaning and expression is a universal trait, one that binds us across different ages and cultures. The words of great dramatists and theologians continue to echo through these spaces, whether they are now filled with prayer or applause. Their insights into the human psyche, their exploration of themes like faith, morality, and the human condition resonate just as powerfully in a church as they do in a theater. This universality of human experience is what makes these spaces so adaptable, so able to transition from one form of storytelling to another. In the end, the symbiosis between religion and theater is not just a matter of architecture or history. It's a reflection of our ongoing quest to understand ourselves and the world around us. Whether we find ourselves in a theater or a church, we are engaged in the same fundamental activity, the exploration of what it means to be human. In this exploration, we find not only our differences but our commonalities, the shared threads of hope, fear, joy, and sorrow that weave through every human life. As we contemplate this interplay, we come to appreciate the profound beauty of these spaces. Whether they echo with prayers or dialogue, they remind us that in our quest for meaning and connection, we are all storytellers, all seekers, all part of the grand unfolding drama of human existence. These elements together create a rich, multifaceted portrait of the interplay between religion and theater. Tillich's concept of ultimate concern and Artaud's vision of the theater of cruelty deeply enrich our understanding of this relationship, highlighting the parallels between the pursuit of existential meaning in religion and the transformative power of theater. From the sacred performances in ancient amphitheaters and churches to the modern stages of Broadway, we see a continuous dialogue, a dynamic interweaving of the spiritual and the performative. This exploration transcends mere analysis of art and faith. It becomes a reflection of our collective human journey, where the search for meaning, the expression of the deepest human emotions, and the articulation of life's profound questions find resonance both in the echoes of religious rituals and in the footlights of the theater. In this symphony of ideas and expressions, we recognize not just the symbiosis of sacred and stage, but the enduring power of human creativity and reflection in our quest to understand and portray the intricacies of the human spirit. Theater is the religion of belonging. For the Human Meme Podcast, I'm AI David Bowles, wishing you a good day and a fine tomorrow. Be a human meme.